Welcome to St. Helen's Anglican Church in Orleans, Ontario, and to this service recorded for the day of Pentecost. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. May God's grace and peace be with us and fill our hearts with joy. Please join with Susan and myself as we lead you in prayer. God's love has been poured into our hearts. We, we dwell, dwell in, in him and, and he in, in us. us. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make, Make known his deeds among, among the peoples. peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And, and speak, speak of all his marvelous works. works. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The Collect for today. Almighty and ever-living God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The Responsory of the Holy Spirit. You send forth your spirit, O Lord. You renew the face of the earth. You, you send, send forth, forth your, your spirit, spirit, O Lord. Lord. You, you renew, renew the face of the earth. earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. You, you renew, renew the, the face, face of, of the earth. earth. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You, you renew, renew the, the face, face of the earth. earth. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You, you renew, renew the face of the earth. earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. You, you renew, renew the, the face, face of, of the earth. earth. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. You, you send, send forth your, your Spirit, Spirit, O Lord. Lord. You, you renew, renew the, the face, face of, of the earth. earth. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the church in Corinth. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Please join with the choir as they lead us singing, Breathe on me, breath of God. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning at the 19th verse. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In the name of God, Creator, Savior, and Spirit. Amen. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Oh, to be together in person as a faith community, praising God and joining in Eucharistic thanksgiving. On this day of Pentecost 2020, that is not to be, not here in Orleans. But make no mistake, the Holy Spirit is alive in our midst. The coming of the Holy Spirit, as recorded in our reading from John's Gospel, takes place when the risen Lord comes into the upper room crowded with fearful disciples, and he blesses them, saying, Peace be with you. And he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Although infused with mystery, this narrative paints an illustration of the event in soft watercolors. In Acts chapter 2, the canvas is covered in bold, bright, acrylic, energized swaths of color. The event is a very public spectacle, moving from the house into the streets. The special effects are well worth the price of admission. The rush of a violent wind, divided tongues as of fire, and the gift of speaking in other languages in order to proclaim the works of God to all the world. There were naysayers, of course, there always are, those who criticize, ridicule, and doubt. Even though they heard the testimony in their own language, they contended that the disciples were drunk on new wine, even at nine in the morning. Peter, preaching to the crowd, and knowing his Hebrew scriptures, explained that it was not alcoholic fervor that enlivened them, but rather that about which the prophet Joel had written. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I will pour out my spirit. And so the church is birthed. The book of the Acts of the Apostles is really volume two of Luke's gospel and describes the beginnings of the church and the spread of the message from Jerusalem through Palestine 
and then beyond, even to the Gentiles. Peter's ministry and Paul's conversion, call to vocation, and travels to preach the good news are documented. And throughout this book's pages, we encounter the Holy Spirit guiding and strengthening the body of Christ. However dramatic, colorful, and transforming the experience of receiving the Holy Spirit was and is, it counts for nothing unless we move on in this story. The gift of the Spirit was not for the personal enlightenment, comfort, inspiration, or empowerment of the individual disciples. It was not about them. It was about what God was and is doing. That power working in us. When we go beyond the book of Acts and delve into the epistles, the letters to the churches, we are constantly reminded that the gifts of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit are for the building up of the faith community. This is about the whole, not a part. It's not for one, not for personal edification, not just for our own guidance, but for the body of Christ, the church. Consider 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and following concerning spiritual gifts. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Christianity is indeed about a joyful personal relationship with our Lord and Savior. And we are given, on a continual basis, new life in the Spirit. But Christianity is not something concealed, a private belief system, something we practice only in solitude. That is why it has been so trying to be a part these past two and a half months, we, why we are hungry to be fed with the bread of heaven and with the love and touch of our faith community. Ministry of all kinds and new forms of ministry continue unabated, but we have missed the link with our friends in Christ. Even so, the Spirit is active, working through new technologies, working through sometimes the most unlikely people, working in souls who are seeking the presence of God in their lives and for the purpose, meaning, and hope that faith provides. This is the immeasurable power of God, anointing us, stirring us up, challenging us. This spirit has been loosed upon the disciples of every culture and generation, including us to bring courage, passion, and truth 
to a world starving for nourishment, crying out for healing, a world in need of a savior. This is the transforming power which takes doubtful, isolated, self-centered disciples and enables them, enables us as body, as church, to offer a love-filled, forgiveness-blessed, alternative life to all God's children so in need of that message. What will the church, our church, look like in the weeks to come? It will be different. Born again in a new way. But whatever the restrictions, the changes, the new practices, the new reality we will help God create, we can be confident that the Spirit will empower us as community to worship and witness to the good news and care for the world God loves. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to God, saying, Indwelling Spirit, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world during this time of confinement and uncertainty. We pray for our Canadian military, for all medical and care staff and others who work in essential services and all their families. We pray for all political, industrial, and social leaders. We pray for farmers during this planting season and all involved in food production and delivery. Indwelling Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember those who are severely tested during this isolation, those who live alone, families, the elderly, youth, caregivers, everyone who is stressed financially and all in challenged relationships. We pray for those suffering in situations of domestic conflict and violence, for the most vulnerable, for those in institutions, shelters, and on the streets. We pray that there will not be a second wave of illness. Indwelling Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the Anglican World Cycle of Prayer this week, we remember Christian communities in Melanesia, the United States, Nebraska, Nevada, Alabama, New Hampshire, Alaska, and Albany, South Sudan, Nigeria, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia, Papua New Guinea, Kenya, and in Canada, the Diocese of Algoma, Archbishop Anne Germond, also our Metropolitan. We pray for our Primate, the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, and for our National Indigenous Archbishop Mark MacDonald. In our own Diocese of Ottawa, we pray for the area parish of the St. Lawrence, including Trinity Memorial Cornwall, Christ Church Seaway, St. John's Lancaster, their priests Patrick Stevens and Colin McFarland, and Richard Mathias, their deacon, and the area parish of South Carlton, including Holy Trinity Metcalf, Holy Trinity North Gore, St. John's Cars, St. Paul's Osgood, Carolyn Seabrook, and Alan Budson, priest. 
We pray for the Diocese of Ottawa in this time of transition and for the blessing of God's grace upon Shane Parker to be consecrated bishop. Indwelling Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that the sick in body, mind, or spirit, and all those undergoing treatments, surgeries, and medical tests will feel embraced by the presence and peace of Christ. We pray for everyone experiencing mental stress, magnified by isolation. We ask for God's healing touch upon all in hospital and any recovering from surgery or illness. We pray for those who are dying, that they and their families may be comforted and strengthened. We pray for ourselves and our own parish family. Indwelling Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who have died, especially those related to our parishioners, and for those who mourn during these difficult weeks. Indwelling Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Continuing with the litany for Pentecost, responding, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, creator, and renew the face of the earth. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Come, Holy Spirit, counselor, and touch our lips that we may proclaim your word. Come, come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, power from on high. Make us agents of peace and ministers of wholeness. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God. Give life to the dry bones of this exiled age and make us a living people, holy and free. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Come, Holy Spirit, wisdom and truth. Strengthen us in the risk of faith. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A few announcements to share. The clergy and pastoral care team of St. Helens Continue to strive to check in with parishioners as to your well-being in body, mind, and spirit. A parish letter was mailed on Tuesday, which you may have received, or it could be arriving in your mailbox soon. Please continue to access St. Helen's website, sthelens.ca, for updates, spiritual nurture, and worship services. There is a letter from Archbishop Anne Germond, Metropolitan of the Ecclesiastical Province of Ontario, on our website, clarifying that we will not be opening our churches for worship yet. The latest communication in Ottawa is as follows from the Bishop's Office. We are working with the Provincial House of Bishops and consulting with public health authorities 
as a staged plan for reopening is developed. Bishop-elect Shane Parker has also commissioned an epidemiologist to provide specific advice concerning our interactions as we gather for worship, including our Eucharistic practices. The safety of all is paramount as we put together a plan of our diocese. Recognizing how many plans and decisions governments are struggling with, we hope to offer our plans to health and political leaders for endorsement rather than waiting for a plan to be developed for us. Back to St. Helen's Parish Life and Ministry. Thank you to those who have made donations on Canada Helps on our website or by check. The Pentecost letter just mailed talks about other ways you might offer your financial support. For your information, Shane Parker is to be ordained and consecrated Bishop of Ottawa tonight on the 31st of May in a live stream service from the cathedral beginning at 7 p.m. And there is a letter on the Diocese of Ottawa website, ottawa.anglican.ca, that talks about how that service will unfold. Thanks to all those who continue to assist with parish ministry, including those who care for our property and our quiet garden, to Joanne Rasmussen for the beautiful flower baskets, to Derek Reed coordinating our tape services and music, Ian Kelly on our website, Peter Humphreys coordinating our virtual meetings, our financial ministries, and pastoral care and prayer chain ministries. We ask God's richest blessings on all of you who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or other special events in this time of isolation. And the blessing. May Christ's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you every step of the way. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit, we say, Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please join with Emmaus singing Sweet Wind. <laughs> 